Hello. Sorry for the delay. It's taken a little bit of extra finagling. Yes, that is a word to get Hello. Zoom. Oops, hold on. Sorry for the delay. It's taken a little bit of extra um, Zoom decided or Facebook and Zoom combination decided to do some changes and it wasn't so easy to get onto the group page. Very annoying. So it takes a little bit, every time they do a change or an update, it takes a little while to get them back to where they should be. So I'm running a little bit behind, but give me a minute to get this block set up real quick. Clicky, clicky, clicky. How is everybody? Hopefully you guys are doing good. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. Not easy. I'm a little bit off today. Just a little bit. Um, got my second shot this week. So did my daddy. And he ended up sleeping all day yesterday. He says he was just tired. So I don't know what was going on there. He says he feels good, but other than a sore arm yesterday, um, I'm pretty good. Not a big deal at all. Um, except for the rain, hopefully. I mean, today it looks like it, from what I saw in the weather, it's supposed to be pretty sunny all day. Thank goodness after constant rain yesterday, which was yucky. I, mean, I really don't like that stuff. Okay. I think I'm just about ready. Ah. <laughs> okay. First thing I want to do is show you. Looky, looky, looky. This is Kimber Bell's fill in the blank for April. And just for laughs and giggles, I did it on this color too. This is the new color. This is what's in the kit and you get everything to do the cactus. Um, glass terrarium, but I like this color too. So I wanted to see what it would look like on there. And then just because I can, I did this one. This is the butterfly from Blossoms and Butterflies. There's some onesies or um, not onesies, bodysuit uh, designs and some tote bag designs on here and more of the zipper pouch designs. This is white leather, the new Camberbell white leather. The nice thing about these is, I know I've said it before, but you get the, here we go, we can show you. The zipper is already included in this blank. Then you have the velveteen outside, but you also have a lining already in. So it makes it a lot easier, a lot easier than it used to be when I was first starting this stuff. All right, let's see, what are we doing? Okay, we are doing block 27 and 28. And as usual, I've already started. Let me just do a couple of quick things here. Um, we got the Northcott order in, which is really, really creative cranes and Blue herons. And that stuff is going out the door fast. And I do mean fast. So we've been out of the box less than 24 hours. What are you guys doing? Anything fun? I'm getting ready for, let's see. We have sewing with their nomies event so, Sunday and Monday this week and it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun because um, there are quite a few people already signed up sent out the meeting information today I should have sent it out last night but you know that's what happens it's just the way it is A second. 
I hate when these days just kind of get away from me. And it's fine. I would have been fine if Zoom hadn't decided to, or Facebook hadn't decided to change things, which is not a good thing. It just kind of throws a monkey wrench into everything and makes it harder for me to get my stuff done. And let me tell you, the rain yesterday did not stop people from shopping. It was kind of crazy. I thought it was going to be a really slow day. And it was not. Okay, now we're ready to go. Let me know if you guys are having any issues or problems with these blocks of the video, with the quilt itself. Um, I, it's really not that difficult of a pattern as far as I'm concerned. It's actually kind of fun because you get a chance to really work on your skills, which is always a good thing. Now we're going to get to do some flying geese in this one, which is fun. And we're going to do it the traditional flying geese method. So this is block 27. Okay, we've got three rows like normal. So we're going to start up here. Oh, here and here are two sets of rectangles that I've already sewn together pretty straightforward. But what we get to do is some um, hold on uh, some prairie points. Prairie point is a rectangle with two squares that are more than half the size of the length of the rectangle. And basically, I'm hoping you can see this. You draw a line on the back of the fabric diagonally on the square, and you're gonna put it over. I usually start because I'm right-handed, always on the right side of the flying geese. And then you're gonna sew just on the inside of that line so that we can iron it up and there's one half of the flying geese is done. Now I make sure to iron this before I cut the bulk off the excess, just to make sure that it's where I want it because once you cut it off, you cannot put it back. So make sure it looks nice and good. And then I'm just gonna cut with a scissor quarter of an inch from that sewing line, estimating. And there you are. Now you have to do one side first and iron it before you do the other side. If you were to do it without ironing it, it'd be very, very difficult for you to get this up because it's gonna be stitched down there. So it's really, really important. Make sure you iron it, it's completely done before you actually try to put the other piece on. So now we're just gonna lay this over the rectangle and we're evening it up with three sides of the rectangle. The square is gonna be nice and straight on the top, the side and the bottom. You're gonna actually sew again, just over the line and it's gonna go right over this piece that we've already sewn. Once in a while, this machine just wants to pull the fabric into plate. It's something that you know, brothers and baby locks do. So I try to have a leader and an ender on it all the time. And sometimes that just doesn't work when I'm doing these videos. It might confuse people more than anything else. Um, but it is a pain in the butt. If you have a leader and ender, you can actually get other blocks done at the same time as you're working on this block. Especially if you're a scrappy quilter. I'm not a big scrappy quilter, but if you have 
a bunch of two and a half inch squares or um, half square triangles set aside out of your stats. You can start one before you sew the actual block that you're ready to work on. And when before you take this out, the actual block that you work on, put another one in. Um, Bonnie Hunter pushed, you know, came up with this idea, this this technology or this um, um, skill. I don't know how else you want to call it. And um, I think she's amazing, absolutely amazing. So you can have a stack of them on the side. It's got a stack of squares, stacks of you know half square triangles, whatever, and just put them through before and after the actual box that you're working on. It'll help with you know, baby locks or brother machines trying to suck in the fabric into your plate. And at the same time, when you get a bunch of those leaders and enders done, you can put those together in a quilt. Whether it's a donation quilt, it's a great way to get, you know, go through your stash. And it'll just help things faster. If you don't know how to chain piece, I highly recommend you trying it and learning to. It really, it's not gonna save you a ton of time, but it really is gonna save you some time and the technique makes things go much easier and faster. Okay. So there's our first prairie point. Now that I've ironed it, and you see how it crosses over the first point that we've actually sewed. Now that I've ironed it, it looks good. Everything is nice and straight. Then I am going to cut off the bulk. Again, quarter of an inch thereabouts from the sewing line. Now that one's going to go back up here. This one we'll work on next. And as I showed you, I've already done this side. So now we are going to put our square on top of our rectangle and do the other side. Now, if you have a quilt that has a lot of prairie points, I think it's important that you do them all the same way. Meaning, if you're going to start on the right side of the, not the prairie points, the flying geese, if you're going to start on the right side of the flying geese, do it the same throughout the quilt. You may not think that it matters, but it can, depending on if the flying geese are together or how they're laid out in the quilt, it can cause your eye to go to that point if, it, if they're not the same. It's a minor thing, but it's, we're always, or at least I am, I'm always trying to um, improve my skills when I'm working on a quilt. So there you go. And then when we iron it over, it should be pretty straight here and here. I'm always improve, trying to improve my skills, always. I'm always trying to learn something new. Um, I find that I'm constantly learning or developing. It keeps your mind going and it makes this hobby of ours um, less tedious. All right, there is our next prairie point. I mean, flying keys. So all I'm gonna do is cut off the excess and we'll lay it down. Now in this block, both of the prairie points are pointing into the center block. So now all we've gotta do is connect, finish sewing our rows and then we'll put our rows together. I am using a scant quarter of an inch seam on these blocks. Not that I have to, but as I have found in the past, they are a little tight with their cutting. And by using a scant quarter of an inch, I can guarantee my ending block is going to be the correct size. Okay. 
All right, we just iron these and we're gonna put them back and then we'll do our center row. And then we'll be ready for putting the block, the rows together. So what else is going on, everybody? I'm working on, let's see, what am I working on? I am working on developing a new class, um, paper piecing with freezer paper, which I think you're gonna like. It's more on a mo little bit more modern design. And I'm really looking forward to it. There we go. So now we're just gonna sew this one together. Now I have iron, pressed this seam towards the flying geese and this seam towards the flying geese. Um, not that it really matters as long as this point here is that way and this one, it, or not point, this seam allowance gets pressed this way and this one gets pressed that way. Then we can align up our rows and nest the seams. like a lot of snowbirds that we've had here are on their way home. April is always kind of a weird month. It's kind of like mass exodus. And I'm just gonna iron. Make sure I put it back the way it goes and just put our rows together. We've got one seam to line up in each of the sewing. So I'm going to start sewing here. My pin is on an angle. We've got one, the top seam going this way, the bottom seam going this way. By putting it on an angle, I can sew and stop with my needle down right in the seam before I take the pin out. What that does is it just gives me an extra helping hand at making sure the seams stay aligned up. Because sometimes just taking the pin out can misalign the seam. Just this seam a little bit. I want just to, instead of, I mean, I de definitely want to do a scant quarter of an inch, but once in a while I do smaller than that and I want to make sure it's nice and consistent. All right, one more seam and then this block is done. And it lines up pretty well. Pretty cool. Okay. Best press, and I can't tell you enough, is your best friend. It really does help with your piecing. Now all we've got to do is attach this side 
and line up our seams again. And block 27 will be done. Tip and a trick when you're dealing with prairie points. Let me see if I can show you. Okay. You see where which zone to which to actually make the prairie point? When you are connecting a prairie point to, I mean, not a prairie point, a flying geese to another fabric or inside a block, where these stitches combine and touch, that's the point here. So when you're sewing, if you can sew and keep this uh, flying piece on top and make sure you do not cross under where those lines connect, you will never cut off the point on your prayer point. It took me a while to figure that out when I first started sewing. I hate when I cut my points off. It's never a nice thing. But if you consistently watch um, where you're sewing, you should have no problem. And as you can see, I haven't cut off this point or this point. And the space between the tip of the triangle and the seam is even. Okay? So that is one block done. We've got one more to go. Now this block has a bunch of different aspects. So let's see if we can set it back where it belongs. So, here's the basic block, and in the corners here are half square triangles, which I've already started or sewn. Now, again, just in case you're not, don't remember, what you're going to do is draw a line. You're going to put both squares right side together and draw a line diagonally, and I did this freehand, from one point to the other, and you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch on each side of the line. Then you're gonna cut that line, and that'll give you two half square triangles. Now, I've already stitched them, and all I have to do is cut them. And I'm just going to iron them really quick. So if there is something that you want to learn, all you have to do is let me know and I'll see if I can work something up for you. I can't guarantee that I'm going to do that for everything, but I'm really looking forward to the... Uh, Freezer paper 
paper piece in class, foundation paper piece in class. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's, I like paper piecing. What I don't like is cleaning or pulling all the papers off at the end. And freezer paper foundation piecing is the best of both worlds because you really don't have a problem pulling the, paper, the freezer paper off. It's just stuck on there. And that may not make any sense, but I promise it will once I start teaching it. It's fun. I like it a lot. It's a paper piece and is probably the only way to really get all of the compasses and um, intricate triangle, not triangles, but star designs. And I'm not talking about traditional piecing with stars. I'm talking about something that you have a ton of points, all different sizes. Um, Judy Niemeyer's quilts are almost always traditionally done with paper piecing. And I'm kind of looking forward to taking some of her patterns and transferring them to freezer paper. I think it'll be easier in the long run, which will also still give me an intact pattern at the end because I won't be cutting up or copying a ton of her stuff. Um, I'll be copying it onto freezer paper. So I don't know how it's gonna work, but we're gonna try. I think the class is gonna be um, some simple designs just to give you the basics and then what you want to do with it after that. It's going to be a bit more of a modern quilt. Um, not as traditional, but for a table run or something, or maybe just a wall hang, something small enough to do with class so it's not too crazy, but enough to give you an idea of what to do. All right, so now we're just going to take all of these little half square triangles that we've made and plop them in. As you notice, um, I don't get rid of my dog ears at all. I've found over the years, very few times do I have to actually take them off and they actually help with my piecing in the long run. As far as lining up, giving me a little extra fabric to bite onto when you're actually sewing. All right, there is the block. And it looks like it's a lot, but it's actually not. We're going to treat it as four small blocks. So we're going to put these together first, and I am going to chain piece. Now, when you do half square triangles that like we did with these white or neutral ones, sometimes you have to cut them down or square them up. Now, you probably could do that with the blocks, the half square triangles that we've done down to an uh, inch and a half, but I find that I really don't, on this one, didn't really need to that much, and I'll show you why. If we keep them the way they are, it's less work. If you don't feel comfortable doing it this way, then just square them all up to an inch and a half before you actually sew them together because they should be the same size as these squares.
if you're having issues making half square triangles, bigger is always better. What that means is making them bigger than you actually need and cutting them down. And you're more apt to have what you need. I'm not liking the way this machine is going today. Hmm, not sure. Now I'm just going to iron these. So let's see, how do we want to do this? <laughs> all right, I am going to iron them all into the blocks that are here. That way we can nest without any issues. And it will give, we're not actually ironing the seam onto the half square triangle part too much, which will cut down on the bulk. I've been working on um, a man bag, which is Kimber Bell's main fill in the blank. It is so cute. I just have to, it's all embroidered. I just have the final sewing to do with all the letters on it. It's cool. So my poor Nikita is doing well, but she's not tolerating the antibiotics that they've put her on. It's not, they're not agreeing with her stomach at all. So poor girl is not having a good time. They, um, she gets her staples out on Friday. Okay. So now we're going to sew these onto here and then sew these rows together. And then the block is pretty much done with the exception of two more seams. So she's going to get her staples out Friday, which is a good thing because then we can take the cone of shame off, which she hates. And hopefully the doctor will give her a different antibiotic because it's the antibiotics that are causing her stomach issues. At least that's what the vet thinks because um, she is just not a happy camper and she's puking everywhere. I am very happy. I can tell you that that I didn't have any long lasting side effects or issues with the second shot. So that is a huge weight off of my mind. The only thing that you know my father is 
besides his arm hurts, obviously. But he slept all day. I don't know if it's just the exhaustion from, I doubt very much that it's just the exhaustion from being out all day the day before, but I have a feeling it's just a side effect of the shot. But he says he, other than his arm, he's feeling fine. So I don't know. I don't know. Okay, just gonna iron these and then we'll be all set. I have a feeling we're gonna have to do booster shots and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's gonna be virus is mutating, which is not fun. Not even a little bit. But it is what it is. And not much we can do about it other than try to be safe. I know everybody's tired of it. Maybe I am too. I want you know life to get back to somewhat normal, but it's just not happening. Or it's not gonna happen that fast. I don't want to see anybody get hurt sick, especially if it's something you know, one of my customers or someone I know, it's just not a good thing. So I put everything in place that I can think of to make sure that anybody who comes to visit me at the store or have a class is safe. And at the same time, when I go home, I'm not taking anything home that I don't want to for my family. Um, who knows? At this point, who knows? I just know I all I can do is keep trying. Now I just have a couple more people in my family to get their second shot, and we will be done at least until they decide we need a booster. I have a feeling that's what's going to happen, but. I mean, I'm not a doctor, so who really knows, but. Here we go. Now this one is just about done. So now we're just gonna put our rows together. We're gonna nest the seams. I think I need to replace my pins. After a while, they are not as sharp as I would like them. That happens all the time, you know. Over time, your pins will become dull. Oh, oh, and it lines up pretty good. Not bad. So now I'm going to sew on the next one for this block. <sighs> now, if this was just straight stitching, I probably would not put pins in. But because I'm trying to line up two seams and keep them somewhat lined up, I will put pins in. I traditionally don't do a lot of pinning. 
I don't recommend that. I mean, unless you're comfortable with what you're doing. But I've been sewing for a very long time. And I know when and where I have my own issue as far as sewing and where I need my pen. All right. There we go. I'm going to just iron it. Now, I know this block is bigger than it needs to be because my half square triangle that did not cut down. And I'm going to show you where I would cut it down now. Now I would actually square it up. And it's going to be the same size. You can see how it sticks out on certain aspects, certain parts. That's because these half square triangles were, big, triangles were bigger than these. So basically now I'm going to square it up with these blocks and then we can sew it together. So I'm going to leave you right here rather than sewing this all together because I do have to square up. Basically all you have to do once you get to this point and you've done both of these parts is you're going to square this block up the same size as this square and the directions tell you what size to cut it. Once you square this up and cut it down this will fit perfectly and you will be able to sew them together without any problem. So then once you, you're going to square these up, you're going to sew these two together, sew these two together, and then they will sew together to create your block. And the only seam you have to worry about would be this one where everything's connected. All right. Hopefully that has helped you. Um, I think next Wednesday, what I'll do is I will get this block together to the point where I have to square up and maybe we'll, I'll do a quick squaring up lesson next week before I do the block um, 29 and 30. So that means a little bit, I'll do a little bit of extra homework and get them ready. And 29 and 30 look like, you know, 30 is an easy and a quick block, but 29, I think you're going to enjoy it because it's some very tiny flying geese and some bigger flying geese. So it should be fun. All right, if you guys need anything, you know where I am. If you have any questions or comments or uh, need some help, again, you know where I am. I hope you guys have a great day and be thankful that the sun is up out again today, which is a lovely thing. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.